Okay, welcome back to the Trilofoots Toolbox. This is a little extra for the students that want to know a little bit more about knocking pistons out and checking for wear. I'll just uh, give you a few pointers on measuring the conrod. Generally, if you're diligent enough, you'll want to measure things as you're stripping them out. This gives you an idea of where the wear is and what is serviceable and what is not serviceable. With engines, if you want a long service life with them, then tolerances and measurement are vital. The measuring things as you take them out and strip them out is important. It's either that or you let somebody else do it. Okay, before we get to the crank, you have to take the sump off. There is a sequence involved in removing the sump and it helps to remove it the right way and put it back properly. This way, you're not distorting any mating faces. Just to get into good habits, the sump is removed from the ends, working inwards, just like removing the cylinder head. This relieves the pressure from the ends outwards. Fitting the sump back on, you work from the inside back to the outer edges. Not only does it even out the pressure on the mating faces, but it reduces the risk of leak. We're starting from taking the sump off and uh, having a look at the crank before we knock the conrod and the piston out. Okay, get a bit more intimate as the crankshaft. This is oil pressure relief valve and your oil pump's there. Here's your main bearing caps that are bolted in. This holds your crankshaft in place into the cylinder block. Okay, so there's five of those. You also have here your bearing cap for your um, conrods, or big ends, big end caps as we like to call them. You have your drain to strainer and pickup pipe for your oil feed. Okay, this picks up the oil from your sump. You always turn this crankshaft clockwise. That's the rotation of the engine. And you can see the motion of the crankshaft going round. The pistons are going up and down. Right, so there's no mystery there. This is a big end cap. Getting a little bit more intimate with the bearing caps here, you can see they've got numbers on. The main journals have, and on the con rod here, you have a number one stamped on here. This will correspond with a number on the other part of the con rod. The purpose of this number is to make sure that you put them exactly back where they were in the right positions, i.e. number one is number one piston con rod. It's important to measure the gap between the con rod and the crank web to see how much end float you have, and you do this with a feeler gauge. There is a tolerance, which is in the manual, and there is a maximum and minimum. If the measurement exceeds the maximum of the data provided, then the con rod needs to be replaced. You can see the feeler gauge doesn't slip into the gap there, so this is all right. Removing the big end bearing caps from the crankshaft, you're gonna need one of these sockets, which is bihexagonal. That means that's two hex. Nothing special, it's not a specialist tool, you can get it in any socket set. They're not actually done up that tight. Undo them, and keep them in order. Remember that the number on the cap is gonna to face towards the oil filter. Actually, the position of where this is at, I've set specifically so I can avoid the oil pickup pipe. There is also an oil feed pipe, which you need to be aware of if you're knocking this up. The manual recommends that you actually take that off when you're stripping down an engine. If you're careful enough, you can avoid it. You've got to be aware that this tube actually sticks up the bore. Okay, so I've got my nuts off the cap and I'm using a hammer end just to tap it to break it, okay? This will knock it slightly up the bore and will let me take the big end bearing cap off. Underneath there are some shells, so I'm taking this very cautiously. Remembering that the number goes towards one side. And now you can see the uh, crank pin here. And what you're seeing here is the shell, all right, which is um, a bearing for your crank. Just make sure that that doesn't get damaged in any way. So once I've done that, I can then actually push that up the bore. The idea here is not to hit anything or damage the crank pins and keep this absolutely perfectly clean. Okay, you don't want grit in there at all. So I use a hammer end because it's soft and I'm knocking this up gently. So it will actually go up the cylinder. 
this is where you need to guide it first of all so looking at the uh, oil jet you can see what position it's in in comparison to the crank web okay in a different position if this was in a vehicle then i'd be laying on my back knocking it up and it might help to have an assistant there to receive the piston once it's popped out once the rings have come out of the bore okay so the pistons out now and you can see this rings are loose and the piston is actually quite worn on the other end here the big end is the shell and you can see this this is actually worn and on the bearing cap as well you can see the shell also is worn this bearing shell is well worn on the end of the bearing shell you'll have a number and it will tell you what size it is whether it's an oversize or it's a standard bearing this is where it gets down to actually measuring I've taken the shells out and I'm going to put the nuts back on the caps in their relative positions which is the two numbers together I'm not going to give you the specific torque setting this you can find in the manual depending on what engine you have and it'd be better to source the data from there than from me but this is a 300 TDI engine Conrod with these micrometer torque wrenches they're actually they're a pain because you set it at the nearest and then bring it around on your micrometer setting on the handle right so it's a matter of talking these up i'm using a workmate which is not brilliant and it will twist you can see this i'm still getting there though i would strongly advise using a uh, solid bench and a vice this I haven't got in this garage so I'm having to use a workmate which is a real pain because it is twisting right so both of these bearing cap nuts need to be torqued up first of all there is method in this madness but we'll see this as we carry on then the next thing to do is actually undo one of the nuts or let the torque off with some feeler gauges what you're trying to ascertain whether there's actually any distortion in this conrod now I've got my feeler gauges here I'll find you know, one of the thinnest and see if there's any gap if there is any gap whatsoever then the conrod is US you want to get rid of it before we go fitting the conrod back on again because this one is okay I'm gonna put some oil on the uh, crank pin or the journal whichever you like to call it I'm ready to knock the conrod back down the bore what you'll realize is that you have to guide it down here and you do not want it touching at any point onto the uh, crank pin. Now I'm guiding this up here very carefully, tapping it with a hammer and getting it into place. The baby's in there, she's sitting nicely. Yeah, we're there. You want to make sure also that the shell is perfectly in place and hasn't dropped. Just for demo purposes, I've put the old shell bearing back in. This is not really acceptable. It's worn and should be changed. I've oiled it up as I did with the uh, the other side. And looking at the number, you can see here number one stamped on there. This corresponds with number one that is stamped on the Conrod here. So this has to go back in the right position. You notice the pickup pipe is in the way. So I'm moving the crank just slightly. This gives me the possibility of slipping it on if you're going to strip the uh, crank out obviously you want the pipe off right so she's in position no problem oiled up and it's just a matter of doing the nuts up and torquing them up torque wrench is still set to the setting we used earlier this is vital it needs to be torqued up correctly to the correct torque setting don't guess this at all get it right shouldn't drop off there's no other locking facilities on the uh, bolts as long as they're not damaged it'll torque up just right okay so once that's done it's a matter of just turning the crank around to make sure that it rolls smoothly 